Reco recording is started. You can write your roll numbers in the chat box. So uh, this is lecture number 36, actually. This is including the two guest lectures. So I should rename uh, the lecture. That's why I have written this time uh, it's 36. Why the strength is so less today? Because of essential test and cap. Okay, okay. Both uh, tests are scheduled today. Okay, good. So almost 50% uh, students are not there. So uh, it would be uh, injustice uh, with the student, those who are uh, absent today. So quickly, uh, we will recall the things uh, that we have learned up till now. And uh, then we will stop. Actually, I wanted to discuss the new point, but uh, many of the students are absent today. So what we will do is uh, quickly, uh, let us have a recap of uh, third unit and uh, then we will stop right I hope the screen is visible. Is it visible? Can someone respond? Yes, sir. OK. So uh, basically, we uh, uh, have discussed uh, unit one, uh, which is focused on introduction of uh, IoT. There we have studied different components of IoT, what are building blocks involved in IoT. Then in the second unit, we have discussed uh, this one, embedded system, right? So what are components involved in it? What are characteristics? So, uh, then uh, what is the role of embedded system in IoT? These, these things we have studied in the second unit. And after that, we have studied uh, directly the fourth fourth unit we have completed, right? So fourth unit basically deals with the communication system, communication techniques in which uh, <clears throat> we have uh, four different wireless technologies that can be used in IoT, uh, such as uh, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, Bluetooth, and uh, B, uh, BLE, in fact, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, BLE, and RFID. So these techniques we have studied with respect to their architecture, characteristics, features, advantages, disadvantages, and the applications. And uh, now we have started discussing on uh, this third unit. Now, let me tell you basic uh, thing behind this. So if you uh, see the syllabus, you will find one device called as a Cortex M3 in this particular curriculum. So rest of the unit rest of the units from the syllabus would be the same even though i change the device in iot suppose uh, like in a guest lecture uh, sir has rightly mentioned one device called as esp8266 right so, which is a node mcu so if i make a use of that device uh, right so if i want to uh, shuffle the syllabus your final year syllabus of iot uh, with respect to that node MCU, only the third chapter will be uh, replaced by uh, the data sheet of uh, your uh, ESP8266 uh, node MCU, right? Jar mala tumcha syllabus madhe 
रसबेरी पाय घायल तो मी का करेन रसबेरी पाय का डेटाशीट थर्ड यूनिट मन करेल ये का लक्षा मे हियर वी आर डिस्कसिंग कॉटेक्स एम थ्री दिस इज वन ऑफ द डिवाइस बींग यूज इन आई ओ टी देर आर एन सच डिवाइसेस एन नंबर ऑफ सच डिवाइसेस दैट कैन बी यूज इन आई ओ टी right just because our solapur university has signed mou with arm university and they have suggested to introduce this cortex m3 into the syllabus we are studying this because of that uh, I, mou and uh, the collaboration with uh, uh, arm university our university has decided to add this cortex m3 other otherwise i was uh, suggesting i was there in a syllabus setting and uh, i was suggesting to introduce uh, raspberry pi and uh, some of the programming in a python uh, that is what uh, i was suggesting but uh, because of that mou and agreement uh, we need to go with this arm cortex m3 right so rest of the things would remain same for any device that you are going to use uh, in in any application if you are using uh, let's say uh, raspberry pi bigel bone intel galileo edison let's say uh, node mcu arduino right so all those things would be in the third unit right so this is device uh, specific unit and uh, here uh, cortex m3 we are learning and i told you the weightage of this uh, unit that is uh, introduction to arm cortex m3 is a uh, uh, huge a lot of questions being asked on this cortex m3 right so you need to learn you need to study uh, cortex m3 very uh, uh, with with a deep understanding you need to learn this cortex m3 right so um, i have divided this uh, unit in a couple of parts uh, for the first case i have taken it as an introduction right so uh, we started with risk and risk architecture risk stand for uh, complex instruction set computers risk stands for reduced uh, instruction set computers so complex means uh, instructions are complex here they are reduced then risk uh, in risk more number of instructions are there in risk we have less number of instructions i can give you the example of 8051 which is sisc right so there are 111 instructions there are 100 total number of instructions in 8051 are 111 and in uh, risk uh, i can give you the example peak microcontroller 16 f877a there you will find 35 instructions right so uh, in a sisc it do not support the uh, pipeline pipeline means i told you uh, the instruction which is going to be executed have to be passed through three phases fetch decode and execute so in sisc uh, there is no pipeline and every phase uh, will happen independently and separately whereas in a, a risc architecture a fetch decode and execute cycles happen simultaneously if fetch of uh, if uh, execution of third instruction is going on at the same time decoding of second instruction and fetch of first instruction will happen right so this will save the time of execution that's why uh, next comparative point is uh, execution time is more in sisc execution time is less in risc then we have only one bus is required uh, of course uh, if those uh, phases happens uh, independently and separately one bus can be uh, sufficient in sisc whereas in a risc architecture we need three different bus buses one for fetch one for decode and another one for execution then uh, we have uh, just seen the historical uh, or you can say background of arm uh, arm so it was <coughs> <coughs> it was first uh, devised in 1990 by advanced risk machines limited then apple uh, apple computers acon group and vlsi technology joined uh, this uh, venture and in 1991 uh, first arm uh, version that is arm 6 was uh, evolved and uh, it was uh, uh, then uh, taken ahead by texas instrument nec sharp stm 
so those are the companies who uh, develop arm processors now what are uh, significant features of arm uh, it's having a large register file <clears throat> it's having a large register file that means uh, the temporary registers are more you can see uh, 16 temporary registers then we have uh, this load and store architecture i told you during the instructions there are a lot of uh, load options load instruction options are there and the store options are there so you can do a lot of things with this load and store architecture ldm ldmia <coughs> right ldm db stm stmia stm db lot of options are there lot of instructions are there with respect to load and store so uh, basically you should uh, identify you should be able to distinguish between load and store these two words are uh, kind of data transfer instructions load means you are transferring the data store means again you are transferring the data but the way in which you are transferring the data is matters here now load means what you are loading your register with uh, contents from memory load manje kai tumche register tumhi bharta hai memory varche content gheun memory varche content tumhi register madhe takta hai acha artha load store means you are storing your register contents on memory so as simple as that then we have uniform and fixed length uh, instructions right so all the instructions are uh, either a 16 bit or 32 bit then we have 32 bit processor that means your processing capability is 32 bit uh, at the time uh, you can do 32 bit addition or 32 bit subtraction lot lot of operations uh, that may be arithmetic uh, logical operations can be performed by using uh, this arm cortex m3 processor then 32-bit uh, instructions are supported in Cortex-M3, as I said, whenever we require to perform the complex task, 32-bit uh, instructions are required. And uh, if we have to do some 16-bit uh, uh, or let's say to have some efficient code density, in that case, you can switch to 16-bit instructions. As per your need, you can switch between 16 to 32. Then less power consumption so i told you uh, less power consumption mm -hmm. is because uh, there are two different sleep modes one is normal sleep and another one is deep sleep right so there are two uh, different uh, sleep modes are there normal sleep and deep sleep so as per your choice you can decide how much amount of power you want to save Based on that, you can decide if you want to save more power, you can put your processor in a deep sleep mode. Then uh, high code density, just uh, now I told you, you can switch between 16-bit instruction and 32-bit instructions. So high code uh, density can be ensured. Next is uh, this uh, Cortex series uh, classification, right? So there are uh, three uh, series, A series, R series, and m series right so in short we call a profile r profile and m profile so i to told you uh, this uh, a profile uh, is utilized for high performance open application platforms r profile is used for uh, high end embedded system in which real time performance is required and m profile is required when uh, microcontroller type embedded system is used in the application right so application profile real-time profile and microcontroller profile these are the three series available in cortex okay, just now i talked about this uh, okay this is how uh, the instruction evolution has happened first uh, version 4 version 4 t came in existence then version 5 version 5 e came in existence architecture version 6 came in existence and then v7 came in existence so clear difference between those uh, let's say four five six six architectures can be visualized here right so this is v4 this is development of v4 then we have v4t then uh, v5 v5e v6 and v7 right so arm is basically 32-bit instruction and thumb is basically a 
16 bit instruction so when i say arm this uh, v4 supports only 32 bit instructions and the same is uh, continued for next uh, version as well but uh, what is the difference between v4 and v4t v4 supports only arm instructions which are 32 bit whereas v4t supports arm instructions which are 32 bit as well as thumb instructions which are 16 bit right then we have v5 v5 means uh, this v5 uh, supports arm instructions plus some of the instruction what uh, does this uh, ramp indicates ramp indicates some uh, 32 bit instructions are added in existence uh, are added in existing uh, instruction set right some uh, some 32 bit instructions are added this is what this uh, ramp indicates right So uh, V5 in, uh, supports ARM instructions plus uh, some additional 32-bit instructions as well as it supports thumb instructions plus additional some 16-bit uh, instructions. Then we have uh, V5E, right? So this is uh, used in enhanced uh, DSP. Uh, this supports ARM instructions, right? So uh, ARM instructions plus some 32-bit instructions are added into that. Also, it supports thumb instructions. Then we have uh, V6. V6 supports uh, ARM instructions as well as uh, thumb instructions plus 16 and 32-bit uh, instruction. But in V7, ARM instructions are supported plus Thumb 2 technology is introduced. Thumb 2 technology includes 16-bit instructions plus 32-bit instructions. So this is having a feasibility to switch between 32-bit and 16-bit. So V7 is the version that the Cortex-M3 has. Right? Your Cortex-M3 processor belongs to, belongs to V7. So this is what uh, super set and uh, this one I told you. Uh, this is thumb two instructions which are 16 bit. These, this is the region where the Cortex M3 uh, have all the 16 bit thumb instructions as well as 32 bit ARM instructions, and it is said to be like uh, thumb two technology, right? So thumb two technology is supported in th uh, this uh, Cortex M3. Now, different uh, applications, application area is uh, described, low cost, uh, microcontroller, automotive, data communication, industrial control, consumer, all of the, uh, all of these uh, we have studied in detail, right? So, with that, the first part is covered. Then I can uh, take next part. This is part three. Okay, unit three, part two. Okay, right. Right. For that, you can refer page number 11 to 18. I guess uh, I have shared uh, this uh, data sheet, right? I have shared data sheet with you. Yes or no? Data sheet bit liye ka tumala? Data sheet bait liye ka tumala. Let me, let me check and share. See, I have shared Cortex M3 data sheet with you. Right, 
and uh, page numbers i told you for the first case what was the page number well page number i will give you a later on which page numbers you have to refer for unit 3 right so at least you will get the idea what are we are dealing with what we are studying right so cortex m3 whatever points are there in a syllabus only those points uh, we are concerned with otherwise the data sheet uh, is of around uh, 550 pages so only uh, 50 pages are important as far as your syllabus is concerned so this is second part uh, in in which we will discuss uh, fundamental okay registers operating modes built in uh, nbic and memory map so this is what uh, uh, architecture of cortex m3 that we have discussed here uh, i can tell you the different things uh, which uh, we are going to study in the curriculum of third unit all those uh, uh, all those functional blocks are uh, shown here you can observe it right so memory interface so we are going to study this 4 gb uh, memory right it will be managed by a memory protection unit so that uh, different fault occurrings will be handled and uh, you know, hard faults uh, this uh, memory usage faults uh, will not be uh, occurred so memory protection unit is just to protect the memory which is of 4, uh, 4 gb alu you know alu will perform arithmetic and logical operations arithmetic such as addition subtraction multiplication division and uh, logical operations such as and or nor xor xnor lot of operations are there as well as it performs the boolean operations then we have register bank i told you 16 registers are there right so 16 registers uh, scratch pad registers can be used for temporary data storage uh here on this side you have interrupt uh, controller that is nvic this nvic will decide which interrupt is to be served uh so nvic uh, will check the priority of the interrupt or exception we know there are 256 exceptions and interrupts if some exception or interrupt is occurred uh, your nvic will decide how to treat that interrupt Right. then we have instruction fetch and decoder so i told you uh, every instruction when it comes to the processor it will be executed in uh, three cycles instruction fetch uh, unit right so fetching means getting the code from memory right so whenever you save some program here it will be first of all taken into fetch unit after fetching that uh, uh, instruction it will be decoded that means uh, it's a uh, Uh, mnemonic would be understood by processor its mnemonic will be understood what action is to be performed it will be decided and uh, it will be decoded decoding means understanding what action is to be performed right and then finally it will go to alu alu perform the final execution then we have debug support right so i told you there are various things uh, through which you can identify the errors which are written in the program right so this debug support will help you to find the errors right so a uh, lot of points are there like watch points and break points are there this debug support uh, system will help you to identify the error it will help you to uh, correct your system right then we have bus interconnect so lot of things you can interface externally so if i want to interface code memory you can do this uh, via this bus interconnect uh, then you can interface memory system and peripherals you can interface private peripherals and some of the things are optional so if you are doing if you are uh, executing the instructions which are stored outside of processor it will be taken in to the processor through this instruction bus and if you are uh, saving some data outside of the processor it will be accessed through a uh, database so this is what uh, different things are there in a cortex m3 you have separate instruction bus and database right so what is the um, advantage of having a separate instruction and database time of execution will be reduced so instructions uh, will be taken into the processor through different path and data is accessed through 
different path that's why the time required by the uh, processor for execution would be reduced and we have those uh, 16 registers uh, right so r0 to r12 these are general purpose registers some of them are called as low register some of them are called as high register right partition is at r7 and r8 uh, then we have r13 which is uh, actually a stack pointer but uh, it is shadowed version means what there are two uh, stack pointers but only one is visible at a time and by default this main stack pointer is uh, visible right so this main uh, stack pointer msp is utilized by operating system and if you uh, uh, want to make this uh, to be used for some application that then that time user application can use this psp right psp stands for process stack pointer so only one will be visible at the time and selection of this msp or psp will be decided by one of the bit in control register i told you uh, this control register will have two bits one bit is used to switch between our uh, msp to psp or psp to msp and another bit is used to switch between privilege levels means what there are uh, two levels privilege level and other one what are different levels memory levels memory access levels supported in a cortex m3 one is privileged access second one is user access right user access means very limited uh, access to the memory is given in fact i can say only access to the code memory is given right so switching between uh, uh, this user access to privilege access is done by one of the bit in control register so two control bits are used to switch between msp to psp and another one is used to switch between privilege access level to user access level uh, there are some uh, special function register out of which control register just now i have described the rest of the four are psr prime mask fault mask and base prime uh, prime mask, fault mask, and base prime, they are interrupt mask register. Interrupt mask register means, mask means disable. Masking means disabling the interrupt. Right. So, XPSR, uh, it will be your program status register. And uh, then, uh, this XPSR is also having three partitions. One is application, one is uh, uh, exception, execution, and uh, last one is interrupt. Right, so we will see upon uh, see uh, this XPSR later on. Before that, prime mask, fault mask, and base prime. These three registers are used for masking of different exceptions or interrupts. Right, so let us uh, uh, see the operational modes. Operation modes here uh, we have uh, two operation modes called as a hand handler mode and thread mode. So whenever your processor is executing main program, it will be in a thread mode. If uh, some exception is occurred, it will be entered into the handler mode, right? And we know that in a thread mode, you can run only a limited part of memory that is user access, or you can get the privilege access in this thread mode. But when the exception is occurred, you have to get the full access and your processor have to switch to handler mode. Right. So this example is shown with, uh, sh shown with uh, this uh, transition diagram. So upon reset, upon reset means when you press the reset button, your processor will be entered into a privileged thread mode. Privileged thread mode means thread mode means it will uh, executing main program with privileged access. Now after that, if I come to know that the complete memory access is not required only i need to put my processor in a sleep mode in that case i can write or i can program the control register control register means one of the bit in that control register and i can put that processor in a user thread mode user thread mode means what this privileged access is taken off and only user access means only access to the code memory is given now your processor is uh, running a sleep mode
maximum amount of memory access right so your processor will uh, spend much of and you can save more power now suppose the exception is occurred when the exception is occurred it will be entered into privileged handler mode this is what a handler mode your exception will be handled in only in handler mode right in that case you need to give a complete memory access to your processor that's why the access level is also changed and operational mode is also changed so privileged handler mode upon execution of that exception you have a couple of choices one you can go back to exception exit and uh, you can go back to user thread mode to save the power otherwise you can go back upon exit of this exception you can go back to privileged thread mode right so this is what uh, the st uh, state diagram or you can say uh, these are the uh, active states of cortex m3 to me jama kewa cortex m3 observe karal your cortex m3 would be in any one of those three states kutla kutla three states are privileged thread user thread and privileged handler your cortex m3 will always be in any one of those three states right next is a uh, built in nested uh, vector interrupt controller right so couple of features that are supported by nbic uh, which includes uh, nested interrupt support vector interrupt support dynamic priority change reduction of interrupt latency and interrupt masking right so lot of discussion we have done on this nvic as well uh, this is what a memory map is i told you uh, this uh, complete 4 uh, gb ram out of which uh, bottom 512 mb is uh, reserved for code that means you can write your programs into those one uh, those uh, 512 mb then we have sram another 512 mbs are allocated for static ram then you have peripherals right so another uh, 512 mb is uh, reserved for this peripheral then you have this external ram uh, which is of 1 gb then external devices ag again 1 gb and system level 1 gb sorry 512 mb system level is of 512 mb so code 512 mb sram 512 mb peripheral again 512 mb external ram 1 gb uh, then uh, external device 1 gb right uh, then uh, system level 512 mb just a minute huh? हाँ सर हाँ बोला आ, मी मी बोलतो आता एच आर सोबत यस 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 एक एक दोनच मिनटात मी कॉल करतो आणि मग अकरापासून सुरुवात करा हां मी अकराच फायनल करतो हो हो ज हां हां kindly uh, excuse me for 2 uh, minutes i, I need to call one uh, uh, hr personnel
Right, so this is how uh, the second part uh, we can conclude. Now let's move on to next. Right, so uh, audible and visible, someone respond. Hello. Is it audible and visible? Hello, hello. Can someone respond? Is it audible and visible? Am I audible to everyone? Maza was I kuyatoka? Rushikesh? Vishal Patel? Sonali Vagas? Yes, sir. Okay. Right. So let us continue. So in, in this particular section, we have studied the bus interface, uh, MPU, memory protection unit, uh, instruction set, interrupts, exceptions, and debugging support and characteristics summary. Right. So a bus interface, I told you, different buses are required to transfer the data from one place to another place. It may be instruction, it may be data. Right. If the instructions are carried on a, on a uh, carried from one place to another pl place, you need I code bus. I code bus means uh, it will carry instructions and you have decode bus uh, it will carry the data right then we have system buses for internal operations and connectivity and uh, some private peripheral buses are also there in a uh, cortex entry then uh, the uh, memory protection unit so this uh, cortex m3 has an op uh, optional memory protection unit upon uh, os when it it is set up this uh, MPU will protect your data by uh, the operating system kernel, right? And uh, MPU can uh, be used to make the memory regions read, read only. So uh, some of the programs are there which you do not want to modify. So your MPU will lock that region. It will make it a uh, read only. Means what you are able to uh, execute, uh, you are able to read that instructions, you are able to read those programs only. You, uh, those programs will not be modified further. Then we have MPU. MPU means memory protection unit, uh, which uh, has the feature uh, of uh, having optional and uh, means, means what uh, you can make use of this MPU optionally. Right. If required, you can make use of MPU. Then uh, we have this instruction set. I told you 16-bit instruction and 32-bit ARM state. This is what your thumb state, which is 16-bit. And this is what your ARM state, which is 32-bit. Right. So switching between 16-bit and 32-bit uh, will happen with some of the instructions. Before that, let me highlight some points. There is no state switching over overhead. Uh, it will save both execution time and instruction space. Second, uh, it will uh, do not need uh, to have a separate code and thumb code source files, making the software development and maintenance easy. And lastly, it's easier to get uh, the best efficiency. Now here, come here to this uh, diagram, 32-bit uh, instructions, that is ARM state and 16-bit uh, instructions. Uh, called as thumb state and uh, let me tell you 
why arm state or 32 bit instructions are required to perform the complex tasks why thumb instructions or 16 bit instructions are required to ensure the high code density we require 16 bit majavi processor complex instructions execute karat nasel tavi it's a uh, uh, our uh, duty to switch your processor to 16 bit instructions and if complex uh, task is to be performed in that case 32 bit instructions are to be executed right so how this switching is possible in earlier versions of cortex m3 uh, earlier version of arm processors it was possible with blx instruction branch with link branch with state change this is what called as uh, switch between 16 bit to 32 bit so this will branch with state change state change means uh, you are saving the contents uh, program uh, contents of program counter so after uh, executing that complex task you can go back to the main program in a thumb state by using bx or lr instruction bxlr branch exchange with link register contents right so this is how the switching between 62 bit instruction to 32 bit instruction is possible in cortex m3 these are uh, interrupts and exceptions which we have discussed around 256 exceptions and interrupts are there you can observe this is from 0 to 255 total exceptions and interrupts are 0 to 255 right so some of them are like uh, reset, non-maskable interrupt, hard fault, memory management fault, bus fault, uh, usage fault, then uh, a supervisory call, uh, debug monitor, uh, pendable request for system service, then we have system tick timer. So those many are the exceptions. Those many are exceptions and remaining this is from irq0 to irq239 these are the these are the interrupt requests right so rest of them are the interrupt request so total 256 exceptions and interrupts are there so this makes a cortex m3 very functional right When we have debug support in a debug support you know a uh, lot of things can be possible uh, just uh, i told you you can observe break, break point and the watch points to uh, check uh, the errors you can observe the program execution step by step and uh, you can identify the errors uh, character uh, summary at the end i can say uh, it's having high performance advanced interrupt handling uh, features uh, low power consumption system feature and de debug support so these uh, are the things uh, you can say in a characteristic summary right so i guess uh, we have covered three parts right so three parts uh, we just have covered yeah instruction set is going on i will share the instruction set with you uh fourth and fifth part i'm covering on a uh, some other ppt's right okay so uh, if you have any doubt you can ask otherwise you are allowed to leave we will stop here for today